Well, welcome back to another Now That's Weird radio show on TV. With me, Ross Hemsworth, here at Laughlin at the UFO International Congress 2010. And with me is Jim Nichols. Jim, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Now, like myself, you were on earlier this week talking about uh, all sorts of things, but in particular the Eisenhower meetings. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, this is... Uh this is one of the, the myths within ufology that kind of gets shunted off to the side, and I, th I think it's, when you stop and take a close look at it, it's like there's much more, a much bigger story here that needs to be told, and, and in light of uh, political issues in this country since 20, 2012, I mean, uh, since... Uh, Funny you should say 2012. There's <laughs> a Freudian slip for you. No, since 911. Uh, the issues in our country and uh, increased security and questionable political issues uh, makes one wonder if uh, perhaps something happened a long time ago, maybe as far back as the Eisenhower administration, that we're just seeing, starting to see the, the darker side of uh, that agreement. Now, last year, uh, Dr. Michael Saller did a talk on this subject here and introduced a new witness who uh, apparently was on the medical staff who said he was there and witnessed the president going in and coming out uh, of a meeting with, um, with aliens. Um, it was a new witness, hadn't come forward before, apparently. Do you know about that? Was that uh, at, at Murak or was it at Holloman? I think it was Holloman, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, right. Uh, UFO investigator Art Campbell over the last year has... Uh, uncovered uh, uh, another extraordinary contact, alleged contact with Eisenhower and extraterrestrials at Holloman Air Force Base uh, in 1955, one year after his alleged contact at Murak or Edwards Air Force Base in 1954. Now this, the, 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 uh, the Art Campbell story has a little bit more credibility because it, allegedly they have eyewitnesses who saw Eisenhower's Air Force One land at the base. Uh, it taxied to a deserted stretch of tarmac. It was not met by uh, Air Force Base dignitaries, brass band, or anything. Uh, Ike's plane landed. Uh, like I said, it landed. It, it taxied to a deserted part of the runway and sat there. And then uh, after a few minutes, it was approached by three saucers one of which landed and according an eyewitnesses claimed that they actually physically saw President Eisenhower leave Air Force One, uh, walk across the, the runway and step on board the flying saucer and he was on board for at least 45 minutes. And then they said they saw somebody who looked like Dwight Eisenhower leave the saucer and return back to Air Force One. Now, what what exactly took place in that meeting is anybody's guess. Okay, so explain what you mean by looked like Dwight Eisenhower. <laughs> well, uh, we're all familiar with the V scenario where uh, uh, military government officials are taken over by extra extraterrestrials with advanced technologies who can replace that individual with something or something or someone who looks like that individual but who is under extraterrestrial or alien control mm -hmm. and that they then these individuals therefore uh, uh, continue to um, introduce an alien agenda to uh, our politics. Now one of the great conspiracies around these alleged meetings were that they were telling Eisenhower that all UFO, sorry, all nuclear testing has to stop across the world and the, mili and the uh, military's tests of nuclear weapons had to stop and that if they didn't stop they'd return in 50 years to stop them for us. Now a lot of people have obviously wound that conspiracy up and up and up because we're around the end exactly. of 50 years now mm -hmm. and uh, what's your thoughts on that? What's your take? Hmm. Well it's very interesting. Um, of course you're familiar with the uh, the uh, missile bases in uh, you know the Midwest and uh, in North Dakota and uh, I think it was uh, Montana, where hardened missile bases, silos, and so forth, were accosted by extraterrestrials, and the uh, they had technology that could uh, uh, remove the uh, the uh, the heavy doors from missile silos. 
and actually uh, alter or melt down the, uh, the, the, the warheads in our missiles with, with complete impunity, um, which, which is a very blunt statement that uh, we, we told you we didn't want you to do, use nuclear weapons, and, and now we're going to uh, show you a little bit more drastically, and maybe you'll get the point that uh, uh, allegedly Eisenhower was warned by a Nordic group that he allegedly met in uh, at Murak, 1954, that told Eisenhower that we were on a on a suicide course with our development of atomic weapons, and and that they, in a, in a very soft, very low key manner, they offered to exchange uh, free energy technology to our our country if we would cease and desist from building nuclear weapons. Uh, at the time, Eisenhower. Uh, felt that we were in too much of a conflict with the Soviet Union to just unilaterally uh, disarm, and so he declined the offer. And these allegedly these Nordic uh, extraterrestrials said, "Okay, that's fine. We'll just pick up, pack up our bags, and go." But have they returned? This is the question. Well, so we go 50 years on and uh, more sightings perhaps than ever before. Now let's take a step back and have a look at how you got into this in the first place because obviously this isn't the first UFO story you've researched. No, not at all. What brought you into this particular area of research? Well, I come from the background of uh, uh, illustrator, artist. I've always been fascinated with uh, science fiction themes. And back in the 80s, I always painted, especially after... Uh, the film Star Wars and uh, Ex- uh, Close Encounters came out. Uh, that really inspired me to get actively involved in painting science fiction illustrations, and which I, you know, was for about three years I got deeply involved in that. And I had my science fiction art on display at the uh, Flandreau Planetarium at the University of Arizona, and it was being very well received. And of course, I've, you know, being growing up in the 50s and the 60s, I've always, you know, had a fascination for the flying saucer, you know, myth, mythos. And in 1980, after I was actually getting actively involved in science fiction art, I had the opportunity to meet a, a, a full-fledged UFO investigator who was a retired Air Force colonel by the name of Wendell Stevens, who lived in Tucson, Arizona. And at that time, he was investigating the case in Switzerland, the, f- the famed Billy Meyer UFO contact from the Pleiades. And uh, I was so impressed by Wendell's integrity, by Wendell's uh, in the volume of data and photographs and, <clears throat> and supportive evidence that he had that I wanted to uh, to bring you know my own skills to offer my own skills as an artist uh, to help further this investigation, and uh, as the Billy Meyer story goes, he was not allowed to photograph the craft actually landed on the ground, and he was not allowed to photograph the occupants of the craft. So I thought, well, this is where I can step in as an artist and do renderings, illustration renderings, to show these scenes with Billy Meyer m- meeting with the extraterrestrial and so forth. And to give the case a little bit more depth and to, to let people see how it, how it might have actually looked had they been standing there with Billy at the contact. Mm-hmm. 